There comes a time in war where the victims doesn't have combat boots, steel hats, or machine guns, but are normal, everyday citizens. Most notably, the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. But other times, it's by total accident, like the biological attacks on Vietnamese vegetation in the 1960s and 70s, altering the lives of men, women, and children. On July 1954, it was decided by the world powers to divide the country of Vietnam into two. At the 17th parallel, Golden Diem was to lead the south, and Ho Chi Minh was to lead the north. It was agreed upon that there would be an election in both the north and the south to decide who will rule the whole country. The election would be supervised by neutral countries, but sadly, this election did not take place, and the split became permanent by 1956. So naturally, the Vietnam War was birthed. The war was a tug of war against democracy and the communist regime. With the U.S., of course, in support of democracy, back in South Vietnam with frontline troops, and the Soviets back in North Vietnam with artillery and equipment. And on January 18, 1962, with President John F. Kennedy's approval, Operation Wrench Hand was initiated. Operation Wrench Hand was initially used to kill forest land to expose the Viet Cong roads, trails, vegetation cover, and deprive them of food. The U.S. did this by flying C-123 cargo planes over a large amount of land like rice fields and forests while spraying a chemical compound called Agent Orange over the vegetation. Agent Orange got its name from the orange stripe marks on its 55 gallon metal containers in which the chemicals were stored and shipped in. It was invented by Arthur W. Galston, a plant biologist, but first discovered as a chemical weapon by Ezra E.J., a University of Chicago graduate. He completed a study called Plant Growth where he explored possible ways to deforest Japanese land during World War II. But with the bombings of Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, using Little Boy and Fat Man made using Agent Orange irrelevant. The Vietnam War was put in a tremendous amount of stress and weight on President Kennedy. So him and his staff created a strategy called Flexible Response. And unlike the white, policy of mass retaliation. Flexible response was a defense strategy which tried to develop a wide range of diverse military tactics to combat the Viet Cong communist hopes. With a fierce insurgence growing in Vietnam's jungles, Agent Orange appeared to the U.S. government as a perfect solution. It was inspired by a similar tactic that the British used in the guerrilla war fought in the Federation of Malaya called the Malayan emergency in the 1950s. It was part of the overall chemical warfare program. Here was a quote from a member in the British military who flew C-1223 cargo planes in the operation. I remember the sights and smells of the spray. In the early morning, low angle sunlight, it appeared to have an orange hue. At the time, that's where I thought its name came from. It smelled like a combination of murder oil and heavy bug spray. I've since learned that they did add diesel fuel to the spray mixture. And yes, we did fly through the mist. We were told it was not harmful. On one of my first drill dust missions, I had dinner the night before and some of the wrench hand crows at the dome. I asked them if the stuff they sprayed was harmful, and I clearly remember the answer. They said that stuff is harmless. We have had God's dream. That stuff is no problem. I wonder how those guys are doing now. I wonder how those guys are doing now. <coughs> 
I discovered another more official pronouncement a few years ago. The Air Force in-country tactical air operation handbook said there are three types of these fluorination chemicals now used in South Vietnam. Each formula is a different type of foliage or mission. And none of these but the three types are harmful to humans or animals. Air crews are often splashed with it. And the uh, ARVN troops who lead the aircrafts have been working with it for several years. Several years with little to no effect. But how pinpoint accurate are those statements in the handbook? In reality, it's very far from the actual truth. Documents were released by a federal district judge on Long Island in 1983, who was hearing a multi-billion dollar lawsuit by 20,000 Vietnam era veterans against several chemical companies, including a company named Dow. In the 1960s, Dow was one of the few companies that produced Agent Orange for the US military and did massive research on the effects Agent Orange have on the human body once exposed to it. And they discovered that one important chemical in Agent Orange was dioxin, and it caused severe illness and even death. As far back as the 1930s, Dow's employees repeatedly contracted skin diseases and other illnesses. In a 1965 document, Dow's toxicology director wrote in an internal report that dioxin could be exponentially toxic to humans. And the company's medical director warned fatalities have been reported in the literature. But they was not the only company participating in this deceit. The document showed other chemical companies knew of the dangers of Agent Orange and dioxin. And also, Dow was not the first company to make Agent Orange for defoliation and crop destruction campaign. According to a 1975 Air Force history of herbicides used in Southeast Asia, Dow became the largest of the nine contractors, providing a price of $7 per gallon, nearly one-third of the total 12.8 million gallons supplied to the government. Between 1962 and 1971, the United States sprayed approximately 20 million gallons of herbicides, which majority was Agent Orange. It covered over a tenth of the total land area of South Vietnam. That's over 5.6 million acres of South Vietnam sprayed with the substance, with over 90% of the spray areas being hit at least twice. 11% of the areas were hit up to 10 times, and these were not just regular levels of dioxin. It was much, much higher, 13 times higher than was recommended by manufacturers for domestic use in the United States. As time passes, the results of the high use of dioxin became even more clear. You know, when it comes to deadly poisons, few are better known than Agent Orange. And Agent Orange. Agent Orange. Made to Agent Orange. Bring Agent Orange. Agent Orange. Agent Orange exposure. During the Vietnam War, toxic exposure. Agent Orange is linked to multiple diseases, including cancers. The byproduct of Agent Orange, called dioxin, was causing chronic... Over 4 million Vietnamese was affected by Agent Orange and other herbicides. And Agent Orange contained dioxin TCDD, the most toxic type. What makes TCDD so dangerous is that it is absorbed and stored in fat tissue. This is what makes it so deadly. It can affect fish, shrimp, cows, pigs, or any animal that comes in contact with it. That means anyone who consumes animals affected with TCDD will also be affected. So, it attacks animals higher in the food chain that never came in direct contact with the substance. Even the unborn isn't safe from the side effects of it. A lot of offspring from parents who came in contact with Agent Orange was born with a host of illnesses like cleft lip, heart disease, neutral tube defect, and a whole host of other side effects. Once it gets into the environment, TCDD can remain for decades or even centuries. And that is exactly what happened in Vietnam. So, 
The decision to spray herbicides in Vietnam decades ago continues to affect the old, young children and the unborn and will continue for years, even after we're all gone. And researching about Agent Orange taught me a very valuable lesson. The tragedy of war still lingers, even after the last shells are dropped.